Daily Fix appears every weekday exclusively on Motor Trend On Demand. See a new episode every weekday with a 30-day free trial at MotorTrendOnDemand.com. That's my girlfriend's least favorite thing about cars is when they don't pull out. This episode of Just Showed Up, we have an Icon FJ44 and also the mastermind, madmind, I don't know. The the idiot behind, I don't know, Jonathan Ward. Jonathan guy. Ward from Icon. And this FJ44 is uh, one of like many different types of vehicles you make. If yeah. you've already seen the shop, if you haven't seen the shop walk around, go watch that now and then come back to this and you'll see what makes it special. But right now we're gonna take a look at like all the amazing little details that go into making like a truck like this so flipping cool. Yeah, these are fun. <laughs> I like this finish too. So this is probably the most popular model within okay. the FJ line. The FJ44, so it's a six passenger, four door, long wheelbase. Toyota never made a four door FJ40. Mm -hmm. They went to the FJ45 wagon and 55, but none of them ever had like the DNA of the 40. Yeah. So I always thought, well, why not? So I rendered it one day and then on the fly I had a client many years ago was like, I can't do it, my wife won't let me. If it had four doors, it could seat six and my wife could get rid of me and the kids on the weekend, she'd be game. So like right then and there while the dude's on the phone, I'm like, huh. email him the render. I'm like, well, we could, we could call it this. He went for it. Yeah. So I lost money on that by doubling down, yeah. doing the engineering to support it. And then that became the impetus behind the new model. Now yeah. it's our, our dominant FJ. And now these, you say you want to recapture the sort of the vintage appeal, Yeah, right? like we wanted to keep it true to the original silhouette and mm -hmm. shape and most certainly true to the utilitarian purposeful roots. Yeah. So we like to say, I mean, there should not, nothing should be superfluous or there just to look groovy and not have function or right. not to improve upon an original trait of yeah. the truck. Yeah. But then like we definitely geeked in it has a pretty obvious, more like industrial, mad, modern, almost DARPA funk to it. Yeah, yeah. So we wanted to make it our own, but be loyal to the roots. Absolutely. Yeah. What, what motor's in this? This one's running a um, LS7. Oh, okay, wow. And we run different okay. variants, Jeez. but uh, in this case, that's what we're running. Can we see it? Sure, and then you'll notice right away, and people are like, that's not an LS, it's got a Vortec intake. It's because it's a truck. We want the aluminum block and heads and the sexy internals from the LS, but the intake design from the Vortec yeah. is more appropriate for the torque curve yeah, that we target we out of it. in this application. So we work like with Volant to develop our own rotomolded intakes. We have a wow. proper enclosed filter, yeah. a drain for river crossings, stock intake and injectors, from the truck app and then LS there down. That's cool, are you able to maintain the dry sump on or to keep the dry sump? No, or? we go wet sump, wet there's sump, no yeah. point, yeah. yeah. And then um, aluminum radiator made by Griffin down in the Carolinas. Uh, we, you'll notice that uh, aluminum reservoir. Yeah, and that breather. That's because the Atlas II twin stick T case at freeway speeds yeah. has a habit of aerating the oil. Yeah. So you end up with a barfing situation. So this brings it through AN fittings to a high point. So it basically is a high point breather reservoir yeah. and then it goes, that's also teed into the differentials for high point breather. Mm -hmm. And then like, you know, we try and use all like AeroQuip plumbing and no compression fittings. So you can see some of them going on through here. Oh yeah, yeah. Lots of AeroQuip, yeah. a lot of good dash fittings, all stainless on system plumbing. Yeah. Um, steering columns, a collapsible tilt by I did it. Oh wow, okay. Um, wow. These headlights are certainly polarizing, uh, so they're an option. Yeah. But they're a mil spec light, and it's funny. On paper, I, you'll not find a light with crappier reviews. Really? Like all the lighting geek YouTubers just beating the piss out of this light with the lumen meter. All I know is I've driven every LED headlight known to mankind. Yeah. It's the best working light I've driven. Really? So you can tell me what the lumen count, I don't really give a damn. Yeah, yeah. It works great, it's not blotchy, I love it. But yeah. the look is polarizing, so. Really? We still offer the truck light. The standard. Which is a more conventional looking mm -hmm. LED. But I am a big geek for diodes, so. So All our interior lighting, every light everywhere in the truck is all diode. That's cool. You, when you start with, like when the truck comes in, 
you're basically tearing the whole thing apart, right? Yeah. It's complete down to frame, and yeah. the frame's custom. Yeah, so we'll, we'll enhance the chassis by working with Art Morrison to get us out of horse and buggy ecliptic <laughs> leaf springs into the coilover, and then we partner yeah. with Fox Racing on that. Yeah, you can see This those. one actually has the new, brand new Fox dual rate adjustable nitrogen charge with Jeez. remotes. Yeah. And they're the large body. But what's cool about those guys, because they do so many military jobs, in the old days, everyone's like, stick to the menu, son. You don't do enough volume. Yeah. So we had to like use this and recharge it that way and make it work. Fox lets us geek out. Yeah. So we pick out, I'm not a fan of steel braided. It's like a 60s, 70s cool, but it sucks to work with. Yeah. It pokes your hand, it corrodes. It doesn't really work that great. Yeah. So the new aerospace stuff, though, is kick ass. What is it? And I forget the name of it, but it is super, super stout, yeah. super durable. And then we can specify the valving internally is built exactly for us by Fox and tested on their track. Yeah. I rolled a truck and that testing that was fine. <laughs> um, and then the plating finish and everything is specific to what we want. So really stoked about that. I think what's really cool about a lot of this stuff is how you like embrace new technology oh, in places yeah. where it makes huge improvements. Yeah. You know, it's like, you know, there's nothing in here as a carburetor, right? Yeah. Like, <laughs> Ooh, I hate carburetors. <laughs> also like getting out of automotive. Yeah. So like our, we're sourcing from skyscrapers, aerospace, marine, rail car. Sports equipment too, right? Sports uh, equipment. Yeah, yeah. I mean, really no prejudice there. Just, yeah. I'm that geek who will be like, Oh, what's that? You know? Yeah, find the best I'll, like, I'll be in, I've been in an elevator yeah. in uh, Chicago. I was in this fancy office building going for some interview. And so that's a really cool surface, like this brushed stainless yeah. on the, so where are they at? So after my interview, I went and found the building manager who helped me find who makes that. Mm -hmm. And that became the, the inspiration to the exact same product yeah. that we buy and laser cut and use for the interior details on the Broncos. And That's like, it's just more fun that way, you know? You find the cool stuff that way. Let's take a look back in the back and see the, uh, the way you've done the... So you, you had to add the four doors, you had to extend this. Yeah. Way. So how do you do that with the body? Well, we build the body from scratch yeah. other than reusing structural elements of the body for the firewall and yeah. pedal brace and bucket. Yeah. So it was actually easy. <laughs> I mean, you just took the CAD file. I mean, easy because you're already at the... Yeah. You're already at this deep point, end right? of the yeah. pond. Yeah. So you took the file here. Yeah. Fillet it. Move it all back to here. Then, then figure out what looks right here. Yeah, yeah. It's that easy, right? Yeah. Try it at home. Yeah. <laughs> or not. You uh, know what? I mean, even like computer aided design. Yeah. Talk about reverse engineering capabilities. Low volume manufacturing resources. Computer aided design in complexity, capability, drastic increases and yeah. drastic decreases in cost. Yeah. So yeah. like Autodesk's new Fusion 360, you can use that one program for ideation, really? emulation, load testing. Really? And it doesn't even now export to another software where assumptions are made, which yeah, yeah. gets sketchy, yeah. like into Mastercam to tell the CNC what to do or the 3D printer. It's all within that one program. That's really cool. And hobbyists at home, it's it's free. <laughs> really? So the barriers are dropping. Yeah. Which makes no sense to me why you have Bertone and Figione, all the classic coach builder, one-off, mm -hmm. big storied companies, they're all gone. Yeah. They've it all seems closed like... shop in the last couple of years. Or they're like some division of some big yeah. brand, but they don't yeah. really do it anymore. Yeah. It's asinine because it's a perfect storm of resources. Why is nobody else? Those doing capabilities it? are expanding. Maybe you should so tell, tell people them. This. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, never mind. <laughs> it sucks. It's hard. It's stupid. It's impossible. Why would you ever do this? Yeah. <laughs> so what, what I like is, you know, you really, I mean, we, we showed some of the attachment points back here, but like you go in to the like, gritty detail on just like the, the smallest stuff. Yeah, like you know, the, the like NATO the fuel cans, tank the is, new European NATO source yeah. can. So it's fuel rated and it's light and it doesn't rattle and it's better than the old metal ones. The reverse light is absolutely blinding. It's, it's, it's crazy. Like, great. How, yeah. Is that legal? Yeah. Really? Yeah, because it comes on automatically with reverse. <laughs> I suppose if you want to get right? really litigious, the toggle switch under dash okay. to yeah. light up the hair follicles of the tailgater might not be legal, but <laughs> no one's complaining. That's, of course, purely hypothetical. Yeah, right? hypothetical toggle switch under the dash. Um, the textiles, 
Uh, we use Mercedes OEM vinyl for the vinyl. It's just That's super really durable. Cool. Yeah, these are cool. Is that electronically triggered? Yeah, or is yeah. That... So it's the Amp Research Power Steps. Okay. So they're made in Detroit. That's they kick really ass. Yeah. And they, yes, they're tech, but they're functional. Yes. They're enabling. Absolutely. So they make perfect sense. Yeah. That's really cool. The, um, Textile in the middle of the seat that's also used on the removable flooring. Mm -hmm. But like the flooring is three layers, so it's rubber backed for. I fit it too well, I can't get it up. <laughs> it's literally like it's too tailored. Cool. Okay, here we go. Um, so you have a rubber back bottom. Yeah. Then you have Dynamat, you know, for sound deadening. Then you have the Chilowich on the top deck. Yeah. This Chilowich. Again, I discovered the um, Wynn Hotel, and then I was in the Museum of Modern Art in New York's outside patio furniture. Yeah. It's in this material. Again, got me thinking. Huh. Constant UV abuse. Yeah, yeah. Probably has a really high dry rub rating. Yeah. It's US made, it's designed in New York and made in the Carolinas. Yeah. Reach out to the company, like, no, we don't do automotive. I'm like, come on, it'd be cool. No. So then a friend of mine runs Design Within Reach and they sell it for like fancy placemats yeah, yeah. And, and carpet runners or whatever, like hallway rugs. Well, they had some blemish ones that got screwed up in transit. So I'm like, hook me up. So we're literally taking a razor and deconstructing and repurposing the textile. Then eventually that company saw the done product in some media or something. Yeah. And then they're like, hey, we should work together. I'm like, you don't say. You're, you're desk dwellers told me to piss off and go away. So now it's cool. So now we buy direct and they'll do weaves for us. And like the, the tech rating of that yeah. is six times what modern car companies really? deem acceptable wear rate. Really? And then you sit down in the summer with shorts yeah. on. Yeah. You're not cooking the back of your legs. Yeah. And then the carbon fiber heaters in the seat breathe that much quicker through it because the weave. Yeah. And it's just, it's out of the box, but it's purely logical. Once you go the beyond the bubble of traditional automotive suppliers, you find this whole new world. Yeah. Wild, yeah. Wild, and it's weird that again, nobody does this, but well, I again, think I'm, don't. Yeah, don't. <laughs> I, I think it's because at large, our industry is all about targeting price point. Mm -hmm. So the, especially in the big yeah. volume world, they want the scale. Yeah. It's all about scale and per unit as cheap as possible. Mm -hmm. That will be acceptable. Yes. Versus in the old days, it was industrial arts driven. Yes. If we're building it, let's make it have a personality, yeah. reflect the personality of the singular vision of one dude that they had the balls to appoint as lead designer, yeah. and they built it to be the best it could be to yeah. last as long as possible. There's the corruption has become, it's bad business for it to last as long as possible. Yeah. If it lasts within like a week of the lease, perfect. the warranty, perfect, because yep. you're gonna come back and buy another one. Also, we saved money on making it, right? I mean, there's a minimum viable product, and then there's this. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm stoked though that they do do that, yeah. the big boys. Yeah. Because it allows all the shops like mine to exist. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Something killer. Let's take a seat inside. Okay. Because we got to show off some of the tech that we keep talking about. Have yeah. a seat. This is either an enjoyable geek out moment or something that will be thrown away on the editing floor. Right. <laughs> but it's a good glimpse into the, my sick brain. Yes. Center consoles. Uh huh. There's a US company been making steel aftermarket consoles for many years. Yeah. They're a good product. I reach out to them and say, hey guys, I have some ideas to evolve the center console. Like, yeah. wouldn't it be cool if it had interior lighting? Wouldn't it be cool if it could fit a double din stereo made within the last 20 years? Yeah. Because when I get into car playing, reverse cameras yes. and Bluetooth yeah. and all that, wouldn't it be cool if the lock was actually flush so you're not hitting your elbow on it? Wouldn't it be cool if the foam was a dense closed cell marine rated foam so after a year it doesn't look like saggy underpants and doesn't <laughs> absorb water like a sponge? Yeah. Wouldn't it be cool if the cup holders were removable so you actually clean them and they weren't metal rims so they don't rattle? Wouldn't it be cool if you could integrate a pen holder, because everyone's oh. looking for a pen to be right there at hand. Wouldn't it be cool if the audio compartment had its own sub-security door? So if you don't need the audio, you can keep it dry and hide it. No one's going to steal it. And hey, you know what? Why not make the lid so it has a gas shock so it holds itself up so you're not having to do all this crap? Nah, no one else is complaining. Why should we? Like, dude, 
So here you go. So here I am. I am now a center console manufacturer. So we geeked out and now we make these ourselves. I gotta say, and we retail them because we kind of have to to figure out how to get remotely even on the yeah. cost. The way that and they're stainless, open, yeah, it's like just, shakes the whole, yeah, <laughs> no, yeah. shakes the whole truck. Like that is, that is, and everything down to the latch is all U.S. sourced. It's stainless Man. steel, thin powder coated, no corrosion, and it's That's, intelligently made. So there's very limited number of pieces going yeah. together, but. All TIGs, you don't see joinery. And like that is a magnet, because I hate rattles. Yeah. So that's oh, like, yeah. That is so, so it's cool. not clapping around and everything. And that's neat, because it hides this doubled in stereo. Yeah. So, so if you don't, don't want to see it, it don't yeah. see it. Yeah. Otherwise, it also keeps it as like a sub-module, because again, my thinking is decadial. So this head unit is worthless in two years? Yeah, absolutely. So I don't want some big cutout in the dash that you're married to. So instead, I'll put an analog clock there yeah. that is what it is, and it yeah. ain't changing, so it lives on. But this is a sub-module, just like my powertrain. Mm -hmm. So the powertrain is electrically connected and communicated through its own bulkhead. Okay. So the idea is, when that engine is no longer relevant, or we have some new highfalutin sexy tech, this thing. pull it out as a module, yep. or pull that out, yep. but the value of the platform and the integrity Doesn't in it, change, right? party on, keep using it. That's really cool because something like this, something like this head unit would just automatically date itself. And you, if totally. it was right here, you're totally It's like clients right. have me do Apple products like iPads and Dash. Yeah. Well, that's great this year. Guess but what? In a year, you've got an outdated iPad. The form factor is going to change. The graphics are going to change. Gonna change. Exactly. It's all going to be different. So yeah. why automatically limit yourself? Uh, these switches. So lights, wiper, fan, vent, and temp. Okay. And then that's a cool, I'm a font geek. I really <laughs> dig this font. So this font is a modified version of Neuropool, which then I designed into the clock, the gear shift instructions, oh, wow. okay. and the new gauges. And this is all CNC aluminum that's then powdered. These are extruded aluminum, not the plastic crap everyone's running for the AC vents. This is, uh, I stole that from Tesla. <laughs> yeah. It works really good, sexy. And then these come from Learjet. Whoa, whoa. So they're unnecessarily cool, a multiple axis of adjustment with CNC, so they do the full wrap. Like nothing kills when you get in a modern car Yeah. and you go to rotate to this side and, and they don't. And it doesn't pull out. And then they don't come back when the sun moves. Hello, the sun moves. This drives me bad <laughs> shit. It's that's my girlfriend's least favorite thing about cars is when they don't pull out. It's that's, just inexcusable. That's like the sign. Yeah. yeah that that's a sign that someone didn't give they a crap. They seven cents. Exactly. You know? <laughs> pencil for you. So then CNC pedals, because when you're muddy, mm -hmm. they yes. have utility better yeah. than the rubber. Also call audio speakers. Um, so high end, but hidden. Okay. And then they always get this series tag, so we number which number Icon there. FJ it is. So okay. that's done by the same company that does these that has been doing like military aluminum instruction plates since the Korean War. Same process, That's super amazing. low tech but groovy. So this is number 103. Wow. And then the legal beagle stuff's there. So this started as a dilapidated 1973 FJ40. Wow. And you know, the Broncos were super anal and picky about the truck we start with because yeah. they used the original body. Yeah. With these, I'm super picky, but in a different regard, I look for the crappiest possible FJs. I want FJs that are at the end of their deemed usable life cycle, yeah, yeah. that from a stock restoration approach, there's nothing left to work with. I feel better about that. You don't feel guilty? No. Right. It's game on, do whatever we want. This whole top, of course, comes off. Yeah, sides uh, roll and scroll with ease. It's all Bentley 10X snaps, yeah. Nike YKK, Marine acrylics. This is all Mercedes Hearts canvas. Feel how thick it is? So that's an oh, option. Wow. So we, Mercedes wow. with the old 280 SEs, yeah. they realized that car, they had anticipated the reality that it was selling in cold weather environments and people were complaining. So they figured out a jute interlayment. So it's a three ply canvas, then an eighth of watertight jute, then another three ply canvas. Jeez. It makes such a difference. That's crazy. We lose money on each soft top. Really? So they have to be hand tailored on each truck. Man. Just in materials, five grand, like on the roll, in the box, before we put anything together. That's insane. But it's it's key. You, 
you know to the way the vehicle feels. Exactly. I mean, if you're going to take the time and everything else, like these latches here, which we've already talked about, which I have to I pull Go for it. Man, that feels good. You hold oh, the way that latches. Yeah. That is. Yeah. This is the problem. I'd be sitting here doing this the whole time. <laughs> it's not a problem. That is. That feels real good. And soft tops. <laughs> Of all the automotive aftermarket segments that yeah. have been completely whored out, yeah, really beyond that, like not even possible to use, yeah, anything. <laughs> so it's all China, big corporate owned, and they're maximizing their business model, not their product. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, next, I let's take this for a let's spin. Let's do it. Let's go and for a drive. And you can see that on another episode about the FJ44. Cool. See you then. That sounds good. Here's what you missed last week on Daily Fix, exclusively on Motor Trend On Demand. We have an Icon FJ44. That's not an LS, it's got a Vortec intake. It's because it's a truck. F it, I'm gonna have some ice cream. We have here a 2016 Mazda MX-5 Miata. So here we have one unit of Benson. It's in <laughs> I'm Carlos Lago, and if you didn't watch last week's Daily Fix, you should do that now. It's exclusive on Motor Trend On Demand. If you need more Daily Fix, go sign up for a free 30-day trial right now. We put up new episodes every weekday, exclusively on Motor Trend On Demand.